I decided to continue on with some of the shop improvements I've been making over the past few weeks by knocking out three more quick shop projects that have been on my to-do list for way too long. And these projects included a table saw cabinet, a plywood storage rack, and finally a drill press cabinet. So I started by working on the table saw cabinet, which will live in the space below the right side of my table saw. And this space has always collected junk and I decided to repurpose it as a place that would store all of my table saw blades and accessories, plus my new crosscut sled could live on top of the cabinet. To build the cabinet, I started by digging through my scrap plywood and finding a few pieces that would work for this. And I decided to kind of challenge myself and only use materials I already had on hand for these projects, both to use up stuff that has been taking up space in my shop for years now, but also to avoid having to go into more stores during this pandemic. After breaking down the parts I'd need at the table saw, I could get some pocket holes drilled, which I used as joinery on the cabinet. And pocket holes are one of the easiest and quickest methods of assembling a cabinet, and this pocket hole machine, while a bit of a luxury, makes this process even faster. After drilling the pocket holes, I pulled out my Rockler corner clamping jigs and got the cabinet carcass clamped together. And this is extremely important when using pocket screws for assembly, as otherwise the screws will push the pieces out of alignment if they're not clamped in place. After adding the screws, I checked the cabinet for square by measuring the diagonals, and it was dead on, which is the advantage of using those corner clamping jigs. Next, I needed to add a few stretchers at the front and back of the cabinet, and these will give a place for the drawer runners for the slide-out trays to attach. Unfortunately, I cut these parts to length prior to actually assembling the cabinet, and of course, they ended up slightly short due to the fact that three quarter inch plywood is not actually three quarters of an inch thick. And I knew I shouldn't have pre-cut these, but I was kind of rushing, and this is just a good reminder to cut pieces like this to fit just to save yourself some trouble. Anyway, after recutting the stretchers off camera, I attached them with more pocket screws, and just a note, there are stretchers at both the front and back of the cabinet. Next, I could get the slide out trays and drawers assembled, starting with the trays. And these are super simple, basically just a big plywood panel with a front piece to give something for the false drawer front to attach to. And I just assembled these with more pocket screws. I assembled the drawers next using, surprise, surprise, more <laughs> pocket screws. And once again, I just clamped everything together, making sure the pieces were all lined up and then drove in the screws. The last piece for the drawers was the drawer bottoms, and unfortunately I didn't have enough quarter inch plywood on hand for these, so I had to dig into my half inch Baltic birch supply. I got the pieces cut to size of the table saw, and then glued and nailed them to the underside of the drawer boxes, squaring up the drawer box with the drawer bottom during this assembly. Speaking of the slides, next I could install the drawer slides, and believe it or not, I've actually had these drawer slides hanging around since I built my miter saw station over four years ago. And finally their day had arrived and I got them installed in the cabinet using a few plywood spacers to help with installation. For the pullout trays, I used some more standard side mount slides that I've had kicking around and installed them at the top and bottom of the vertical stretchers I had added. I installed the trays themselves by adding a spacer beneath the tray and adding one screw at a time to the drawer slide, sliding the tray out little by little until I could remove the tray to add the last screw. And hopefully now you can get a better idea of how these trays work. And this was an idea I got from my buddy Brad over at Fix This Build That. And I really based this whole cabinet design around his table saw cabinet build, which I'll link to in the video description below. I could wrap up the cabinet construction by adding some back panels, which I cut from more scraps of three quarter inch plywood. And also you'll notice that one pair of the drawer slides actually extends past the back of the cabinet, again, because these were what I had lying around. But since this cabinet will live under my table saw, this really won't cause any issues. So with that, the cabinet itself was done. So I gave it a good sanding, breaking all the edges. And I also sanded the drawers and sliding trays while I was at it. The last pieces to work on for the table saw cabinet were the false drawer fronts. And I had a perfectly sized piece of this primed plywood laying around for these. I cut the pieces to size at the table saw and then I needed to clean up the edges before finishing. To do this, I decided to try out a new tool from my buddy Mike Farrington, who's another awesome YouTube woodworker, and he's dubbed this tool the Double Taper Sanding Disc. This was the first time I had tried the sanding disc, and I've seen Mike use something similar in his videos a ton, so I was really excited to give it a shot, and let me tell you, the results were pretty awesome. So essentially, this turns your table saw into a disc sander, but you have the advantage of being able to use your table saw fence as a reference. And this means sanding the edges of parts is a piece of cake, and I actually used my Rockler crosscut sled to get the ends of the pieces while I was at it. 
and I still need to dial in how much material I'm trying to take as I was definitely taking too much here, which led to a little burning, but you can see that the resulting edges are incredibly clean, especially on something like plywood. And I'll link to the double taper sanding disc in the video description if you want to check it out and support a fellow content creator. After sanding the edges, I added a chamfer to the edges of the false fronts at the router table, and I decided this would be another good opportunity to mess with my new Powermatic power feeder, and man is this thing super cool. I was able to chamfer all of the edges of these false fronts really quickly, and it even handled the ends just fine. And I'm really excited to use this power feeder more in the future, both here at the router table and at the table saw. Before finish, I cleaned up the chamfers with a little sanding, and then I could apply my finish of choice for shop projects, Total Boats Halcyon Clear. And I've really been liking this stuff lately as it dries extremely fast, rolls on nicely, and it's super durable. And I'll link to it in the video description below if you want to check it out. After the finish had a chance to dry, I got the drawers added back to the cabinet and installed the false fronts, which is a process you've probably seen me do more than a handful of times. And I just used eighth inch spacers between the drawer fronts, clamped them in place, and then added screws from inside the cabinets to attach the fronts. Finally, I added the false fronts and pulls for the sliding trays, and the cabinet was looking great. The last thing to add to the cabinet was a set of casters, and I used these Rockler Total Lock casters here, which are by far my favorite casters, as they lock both the wheels and the spindles. After adding the casters, I could <laughs> clean out the junk from under my table saw and get the cabinet rolled into place. Unfortunately, since I made a few changes to my crosscut sled design by adding that dust collection hood, I actually had to swap over to some smaller, lesser quality casters, but as you can see, this cabinet is the perfect spot for storing a crosscut sled, and I'm actually probably going to route in some grooves for the miter bars to slide into just to give me a little bit more clearance. I could also go ahead and get those sliding trays loaded up, and I just used pan head screws to hang everything. And these trays are great for blades, wrenches, riving knives, and of course the backup saw stop blade cartridge that I always keep on hand. And I also set up the dual taper sanding disc and the extra sandpaper for it on the second tray, along with my feather boards, and I could call the table saw cabinet complete. All right, moving on to project number two, something I've been meaning to get to for a long time now, and that is a new solution for my plywood storage. Now, if you've been around a while, you'll remember me building this rolling horizontal cart a while back on the channel, and honestly, I've never been a very big fan of it. It doesn't hold much plywood, it's incredibly heavy once loaded down, which means it's really hard to move, and now that I have much higher ceilings in my shop, it's a huge waste of floor space. So I decided to completely disassemble this cart, salvaging whatever material I could, and start from scratch with a new vertical plywood storage rack. I finished disassembling the cart and then I could get some pieces for the new plywood rack cut to size of the miter saw using my new stop lock setup, which I'm loving. To assemble the frame of the rack, I had initially thought to use these metal angle bracket hinges which are designed for gates so that I could swing the rack off of the wall to access the plywood a little bit more easily, but these brackets didn't really end up working for my design and looking back I didn't really need the swinging functionality anyway. So on to plan B, I used pocket screws to assemble the frame, this time using 2.5 inch pocket screws since I was using 2x material. And I drilled the pocket holes into my pieces and then I could start assembling the rack, starting by attaching one of the horizontal stretchers to one of the uprights. And once again, I clamped the pieces in place before driving in the screws and I added one stretcher at the top and bottom of the frame along with one more in the center. And this frame is pretty huge so it was a little bit awkward building this on my assembly table, but I eventually got it done and repeated the process to build a second frame. Next, I cut some pieces of 2x6, which I used to connect the two frame assemblies to each other at the miter saw. With those pieces cut, I could start assembling the overall structure of the rack, and I first needed to add the spacer blocks to the top of the frames. After adding the spacers, I laid the two frame assemblies on the floor on top of each other, and then I spaced them apart using a few spacer blocks, and then finally attached the 2x6 stretchers to connect the two frame assemblies along the top end of the rack. Once the 2x6s were attached, I flipped the entire rack assembly over, which was getting pretty big at this point, so that I could add the 2x4 stretchers at the bottom end of the rack. And these stretchers extend past the front face of the frame, which will create a little shelf for larger plywood offcuts. I wanted to add a 2x6 to the front of these 2x4 stretchers to create a little front stop for the pieces of plywood on the shelf, but of course the 2x6 split as soon as I drove in a screw, but I just ripped it down to the table saw to remove the split section and attached it. 
I also decided to add a little corner bracing to the two large frames, which I did by cutting some scrap 2x4 pieces at a 45 degree angle on both ends, and then screwing those pieces to the inside corners of the frames. Next, I could add some stretchers to the back of the rack, which will act as a backstop for the full sheets of plywood, and also give the structure some more strength. To create another shelf for some smaller offcuts, I added two pieces of 2x4 about halfway up the rack, but this connection wasn't nearly strong enough and I'll show you how I beefed it up a little later. I also added another piece of 2x6 to the front of this shelf, and luckily this one didn't split on me. With that, I figured I could finally stand the rack up and see how it fit, and as you can see, I was still considering having the rack swing out at this point, hence the casters. Next, I could start adding some plywood to build out the three shelf areas, and this was actually the plywood from the previous plywood cart, which I was able to reuse. And I also reused these pan head screws and actually all the fasteners from that cart, and I needed to drill some recessed holes for these so that the sheets wouldn't snag on the screw heads when I slid them onto the shelf. I added a piece of plywood to the upper shelf and also added a few more pieces along the front face of that frame just to keep smaller pieces from falling off of the shelf. And I also did the same thing on the bottom shelf using the sides from the old plywood cart for this. And then I could get the plywood rack stood up and moved into place. Since my shop floor is far from level, I needed to shim it up a bit before attaching the rack to the wall and I attached the rack using three inch screws, making sure I was going into studs. Now realistically, this rack isn't going to tip over, but attaching it to the wall does give it a ton more rigidity. Once the rack was attached to the wall, I slid a couple sheets onto the bottom shelf, and I immediately noticed there was a pretty decent amount of friction when sliding the sheets into place. Luckily, I've had this piece of black HDPE hanging around for a couple years, and it was almost the perfect size for this area. So I cut it down to size of the table saw and then attached it with some screws, making sure to countersink the holes so the plywood sheets wouldn't catch on the screw heads. After adding the HDPE, I could try sliding the sheets in again, and I was amazed at the difference it made. I definitely recommend something similar if you plan to build a rack like this for yourself. And with that, I could get the plywood rack loaded up and I figured it was complete. Unfortunately, I noticed the upper shelf sagging quite a bit after it was loaded down for a few days, but luckily I could just add a piece of plywood at each end as bracing, and this seems to be working great. All right, onto the last of the three shop organization projects, the drill press cabinet. So I sized this cabinet to fit underneath the table of my drill press, which is another kind of wasted space in my shop. Once again, I built the cabinet using scrap three quarter inch plywood and pocket screws. So I'll just breeze through that construction process. And instead I'll show you the drawers, which I built a little differently on this cabinet. I didn't have any other drawer slides on hand. So I decided to instead try a technique I saw in one of John Peter's videos, where he showed how to build drawers to work with shop made drawer runners. And these drawers need to have a recessed drawer back so that you don't pull the drawer all the way out by accident. And I decided to use rabbits for the drawer box construction just to make it a little easier to add this recessed back. I set up a half inch bit on my router table to cut the rabbits. And I use this handy little gauge from Rockler to set the fence location as well as the height of the bit. With that dialed in, I could test the cut and it looked great, although it was a little loose as I don't have a bit sized for half inch plywood. With the fit confirmed, I could cut the rabbits on all the drawers, of course not realizing my dust hose wasn't actually connected to my router table even though my dust collector was on, hence all of this dust you see spraying everywhere. Anyway, after cutting the rabbits for the drawer back, I moved the fence to cut the rabbit for the front, which is flush with the sides, and then I moved the fence and bit one more time to cut the rabbit for the half inch drawer bottoms. Assembly with this kind of drawer box joinery is super simple as the rabbits really help to lock all of the parts in place. And I just added glue to all the rabbits, put the pieces together, and then tacked the pieces in place with pin nails. I repeated the process for the other three drawers, checking for square along the way, and then I could come back and reinforce the drawers with screws. And this probably wasn't necessary with the rabbits, but these drawer boxes have a lot more force put on them than drawers using typical drawer slides, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to add a few screws. With that, the drawers were good to go, so next I could work on the drawer runners, which I cut from scraps of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. To clean up the blade marks left on the runners from the table saw, I ran them through my Powermatic drum sander, which also helped to make sure the runners were all the exact same dimension, which is really important here. Next, I drilled and countersunk a few holes in the runners, 
After drilling the holes, I could get the runners installed using glue, brad nails, and inch and a quarter screws. And I used this little plywood spacer to help position the runners roughly a 16th of an inch above the drawer box below. And it's important that this is a pretty snug fit for the drawers to operate smoothly. Speaking of which, after installing the other runner, I could test out the drawer and as you can see, it works great. I repeated the process for the rest of the drawers and I sized my drawers so that I could use that same spacer for all of the runners. And these long drawer sides again help to keep the drawer from falling out accidentally and I was surprised by just how well these drawers work with these DIY runners and I'll definitely be using this technique again in the future. Finally, I could make the false fronts for the drawers and I had this scrap piece of ambrosia maple which was essentially the exact size I needed for all four of these drawer fronts. Unfortunately, it had checked quite a bit over the last few years but I was able to stabilize it quickly with CA glue and then I got the pieces ripped to width at the table saw. Next, I needed to resaw the boards into two pieces to get the four false fronts I needed which I did with my Powermatic bandsaw which made really quick work of this and then I milled the boards to an even thickness at my Powermatic planer. Next, I cut the false fronts to length of the miter saw, and once again, I am so glad I got this stop lock system dialed in, as it has been super handy on these projects so far. Finally, I could add a chamfer to the edges of the drawer fronts at the router table, and then I got the drawers and drawer fronts sanded, breaking any sharp edges while I was at it. I installed the false fronts using the same spacer method, again using hot glue on the topmost drawer since I couldn't get a clamp there, and then I could install more of the same pulls as I used on the table saw cabinet. This time though, I decided to recess the pulls as I didn't want them sticking out as far and <laughs> hitting my knees while I work at the drill press. To do this, I first drilled a small pilot hole just to give the Forstner bit something to locate itself with, and then I drilled a recessed hole with the Forstner bit. To give the recess a little bit of a cleaner look, I countersunk the hole with this awesome new countersink bit, and this thing leaves a perfectly chamfered hole, and I'll link to it in the video description, I've been really impressed with it so far. Finally, I could drill a larger through hole for the bolt and get the pull installed, and man, I think this is an awesome look. For whatever reason, recessing the pull slightly and having that countersunk hole just gives the pull a much more custom feel, and I definitely think I'll be using this technique again in the future. Anyway, with the pulls installed, I could subsequently remove them and apply a few coats of Halcyon Clear, which really made that ambrosia maple pop. Once the finish dried, I added a little paste wax to the runners just to help things slide a little bit more smoothly. And then finally, I installed the casters on the cabinet and rolled it into place under the drill press table. Of course, cleaning up the area a little bit first. And with that, I could sit back and enjoy my much more organized shop, and I could call these three shop organization projects complete. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. I am really, really happy. I finally got all three of these projects checked off of my list. So if you guys want access to SketchUp files of all three of these projects, check out my YouTube member program. My members get access to all of my SketchUp files, at least at a certain level. And that's also a great way to support me. Huge thanks to all my members. I'll have them listed here on the screen. Also, if you want to learn more about all the tools and materials I use on this project, including all of those sweet, sweet Powermatic tools, check out links to those down in the video description below. And last, if you're not not already why not go ahead and get subscribed ring that little notification bell and check out this other video that youtube thinks you'll enjoy all right thanks again for watching everybody and until next week happy building